All right, guys, this is a quick test of Act 1 to see how well it can track the finger movement of a guitar. You know how difficult it is sometimes when we are capturing motion data with gloves on a guitar. So let me see if this actually works using Act 2. I'm going to try to play Amazing Grace. I'm not the best singer. Let's check it out. Okay, <laughs> here goes. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. All right. So the idea, guys, is uh, for us to take the footage that we just captured. This was me playing the guitar and use that as an asset right here. But we need to first click on Act 2, right? So Act 2 is then offers you the option to upload the video and then select the photo, right? Now under here, there's some hidden settings. Here is where you adjust if you want more expression on the faces. But uh, I think what I've noticed is that uh, when you increase this setting too high then the arms the gestures don't work as well the facial expressions will be more expressive like they are indicating here but the arms are going to be kind of messed up so like they recommend stay on three so that you get like a balance between the facial animation and the body animation itself right so these are the main things when it comes to act two make sure that you're not in prompt Make sure you click on Act Act Two, and make sure you're in Gen Four for it to work. Okay, so Act Two over here, and uh, let me go ahead and bring up the guitar video that I created. So I have two videos: one that you saw the intro of, and then the actual music. Let me first select the music and see how that how that goes. Right, so the one that I'm going to use is the music, which is this one. Uh, first of all, here, give it a sec a time to detect a face. If the face is not detected, it's not going to work, all right? So first 30 seconds of your video will be used. Video exits 30 seconds. So I think there's like 0, 0.0 something of a second left after the 30 seconds. So make sure that your video is exactly 30 seconds long. Then when it comes to the source footage over here, so my thinking was that, uh, okay, if I'm not going to use generative AI, I could go to Envato which has like actual photos. These are photos of uh, actors that have been paid to f be featured here. So if you don't want to use generative AI, and I completely, totally understand that so many of you guys out there, part of this community, are really uh, turned off when it comes to generative AI. So if you don't want to use that, then I recommend using something like this that has photos that have been licensed right royalty free guitar playing stock photos over here and since our source footage uh, which you can see in this folder right here of me playing the guitar is one person and it's facing the guitar is facing to the to the right of the screen so if i'm right-handed the guitar is gonna face this way if you're left-handed it's gonna face the other way right so make sure that the picture that you pick actually matches the orientation right so this photo right here I think we'll probably have an issue. This is the one that I've fixed. When I shot my footage, for some reason, it flipped the video. So make sure that you flip back the video so that it matches the orientation of the footage. I think that's what, from the tests that I've done, that's what I'm encountering is that if the footage, the source footage that you're gonna to use to drive this, the picture doesn't match the orientation, you're gonna have some issues. At least it has to be close enough. And so this is the one that I'm picking. And mainly because this one has the face. So Runway Act 2 is going to look for those landmarks of the hands and the face to see if it matches with the, the source footage right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload that. And it's going to crop it. So if we say I want it to be like 16 by 9, which is uh, like HD, I want to be able to use this in um, my YouTube videos, wherever I want to use it. So I just go ahead and crop it. And when you're cropping it, try to keep the hands <laughs> in there so that you don't lose uh, the ability for the video. So uh, let's see. And I don't think it helps you. I guess you could delete it if you want to crop it again. 
but at least now we have a picture you can see where the hands are clearly in the frame okay so we have our source footage that is me playing the guitar okay so now the idea here is i want to see if act two can take my guitar hands that i'm playing here and translate it to this because if that's the case that means we will be able to use motion capture for different still shots. So like if you have an environment in the Android engine and you've created like a meta human, right? You can then use that still picture of your meta human and then be able to add animation to it, facial animation of your performance or someone that you've hired to perform. So this is the beauty of this is that it keeps the human element as part of this process. Yes, you're using, yes, you're using AI, but you're using it to drive, using your own performance, a human performance to drive a still image or still render from your short film. So you could have, if you've set up your environment really well, you could change camera angles here, you know, in, inside of the Unreal Engine. Even if it's Maya, 3ds Max, wherever you are, you can adjust the camera angles and still be able to drive the performance that way. But try to match the performance with the still image itself to see if the, to, to get better results. So we're going to see if it, that works out. And this is 30 seconds, which is actually amazing that we're going to we'll be able to get at least 30 seconds. So if you add this together, like six of these, you already have like a, a mini short film of sorts, you know? So let's go ahead and generate. And right now I have 964 credits and this one is going to cost 150 credits. So just please pay attention to that. And so, Part of doing motion capture is that you have, for example, when I'm using a motion capture suit, I can capture any like unlimited, uh, you know, length of motion capture. But here you really are limited by what the platform offers you. So that's the kind of trade-off in using these platforms. And this is costly, <laughs> you know. So maybe, it, I, of course, the part that I'm concerned about, of course, that I'm trying to solve is playing, the hands playing the guitar, with the mock-up, so I don't have gloves, I don't have a head-mounted camera rig. I want to get the motion capture data from my performance onto this character or this person, whoever this is. And let's see the result of that. Okay, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and generate. Okay, so that is the part. And you know, surprisingly, this doesn't take very long. And there are some platforms that take a long time, but for Runway, for some reason, it really... Like it's surprising how quick it does because this is essentially similar to rendering. You'll be, I guess, in and the Unreal Engine with the, the new quick render, the Unreal Engine 5.6, the new quick render can give you that result. But the fact that it's going to be able to animate the face, you know, there's no rig in this character. There's no like uh, blend shapes. It's not like no like bones in here. It's just going to take the information that it sees in the final render or the still image and then generate an animation out of it. So I'm very curious. Uh, the challenge here, I didn't want to match the hands because I want to see, is it actually going to take the hands and put them on the chord of C major? Because that's what I'm playing in that C major chord. I want to see that. I want to see if it can actually do that. Or do I have to find a photo of someone that is actually whose hands are on the C major chord to, for it to be able to, to match? Now, you can see that some of my hands are in this case. Like if I mute this, as I'm playing back, you're not seeing all of the hands. So I'm very curious to see how well it's going to take the body uh, like movement of my performance here and if it's going to show up here as well. That is, the, I think, the magic of AI in terms of what the result is going to be is that that's going to be, that's going to change the way, the way we do motion capture. If this system is able to take the performance up at the top right here, right, and then apply it to this, that means we have a workflow ahead of us where it, we don't, even if we are not using generative AI, final pixels, we can take... Uh, final renders of our environment, of our characters that we've created, either you've modeled in 3D, as long as it's a humanoid that you are uh, with a facial, uh, the face appearing, because a runway needs to see all of those landmarks, that's going to be. So 
Once this is done, I'm going to let it uh, go through. Once it's done, I'll show you the result. But while that is done, let me go ahead and also generate the other one. I'm going to pick up the one that the intro so that you can see how well it does with that as well. So I've uploaded the intro as well. And I'm going to see if my talking, so this is what it sounds like. All right, guys, this is a quick test of act one to see how well it can track the finger movement of a guitar. You know how difficult it is sometimes when you're capturing motion data. All right, so let's see if it's able to take that and apply it to this as well. That I'm very curious about that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and generate. So this is 23 seconds. It's gonna be 115 credit. And up here, it's I still have a 814. Look, let me go ahead and generate and then I'll show you the result of both of them. And I think that's the cool thing is that you can queue things. So you just go ahead and grab a cup of coffee, eat something. I would like to eat posho if I had some right now. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, this is wild. This is wild. Okay, so listen to this. That is wild, guys, that it was able to take a facial performance, get the guitar, like the still image of this gentleman playing a guitar. That could be your actor, could be yourself, could be someone that you've paid and be able to. Now, the challenges that I'm seeing is that it did not retain the size of the hands. I think it's because of the position of this particular, the source video itself is that it kind of tries to match that, but it doesn't retain the original part of it. And you can actually see, I mean, it did a good job of trying to move the hand from here to the C chord, right? Which is what I was wondering, would it be able to do that? But the fact that it was able to even change the perspective every now and then as this is playing is amazing, right? Like right there, the still image is this you know, but it's able to change the camera angle, add the lighting, the reflections and all of that. This is really, really cool. So now the potential of this is just mind blowing. The thing, the, the things that we can do with Act 2 are limitless, I think. Uh, short of, you know, the shortcomings are there. And I think this is probably gonna be fixed. But for example, you can see the guitar shape. In the original photo, it, the, it was right here, but I think, because it tried to match my arm, the position of my arm, that's why it was it was trying to compensate for that. Because the guitar really doesn't go that far, but here, so I would need almost to match the angle, the guitar style, for it to be able to do that. But the fact that it was able to even do this is is amazing. This is impressive, and they were, the part that also blew my mind is this intro right here. Listen to this. All right, guys, this is a quick test of Act 1 to see how well it can track the finger movement of a guitar. You know how difficult it is sometimes when you're capturing motion data with gloves on a guitar. So let me see if this actually works. So that's the struggle right here, is that the hands, it's still having issues with hands. Once they work these things out, these the, the hands, because AI, for whatever reason, has a hard time tracking fingers and doing a good job around it but given that this is just a still image it's trying to get the information out of the still image to apply to this video it's it's amazing the fabrics you know how like the subtle movements of the shot like there's no simulation right here there's no cloth simulation no bones no skeleton no facial rig all is using is that information from the video to be able to drive this. This is it's, it's mind blowing, guys. <laughs> it really is. So anyway, this is the result. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what, if you'll be using this or if you're inspired, because I want to hear the ideas that you probably are thinking about. But for me, there's so many things that I've already said percolating in my brain of how I'm able to use this. But I'm clearly going to need to match the position better for it to be able to do that job. But hopefully the technology is will improve to a level 
where we don't have to deal with that you know that it's automatically like the hand size are too big it, it needs to be able to retain that so it's trying to capture the movement here but so and that's where the motion capture suit is you know has an advantage is that you have the data of the bones how they're moving in the fingers and it applies that to the skeleton of your 3d character without messing up with this but the fact that this is just a still image i mean the potential this is the worst i think this is gonna be right so anyway guys let me know what you think this i think it's, it's crazy <laughs> this is by the time like five years from now even two years from now three years from now 10 years 20 years i the technology is going to be totally different the whole landscape of filmmaking is going to be totally different but this is encouraging because i know we can use this technology to create short films and i can see why for example companies like netflix are starting to use ai in some of their episodes and like key shots and things like that because the potential you can actually see the foundation where this is headed act two this is act two can you imagine what act four act five is gonna be so guys this is that was the these are the results of runway and i think it has a lot of potential uh the way i think i'm i'm just thinking out loud here guys even as i'm doing these tests right i know that there are some ethical uh issues behind generative ai but what i'm testing here is could we use our this final still render from our animations or a photo of someone or a character or something that you want to put animation to and instead of using a motion capture suit instead of using a head mounted camera rig be able to render final pixels out of it right so this is the result let me know what you think in the comments below if you think this approach works for you and of course i, I when i see errors when i see uh, like shortfalls of this platform i'll point it out just like i've done in the past but i think this is one way forward so thank you so much for joining me guys uh, i pray that you continue to dare to dream big that you pursue your god-given dream right and that you don't give up uh, let me let us continue to use these tools like at least explore how we can use them to tell our stories and be or to tell authentic stories convincing stories much love to each and every one of you i continue to pray for you bye for now